Apocryphon of John. Secret Sayings. The Apocryphon of John. The Teaching of the Savior, and the Revelation of the Mysteries and the Things Hidden in Silence. Even these things which he taught John, his disciple. And it happened one day, when John, the brother of James, who are the sons of Zebedee, had come up to the temple, that a Pharisee named Arimanius approached him and said to him, Where is your master whom you followed? And he said to him, He has gone to the place from which he came. The Pharisee said to him, With deception did this Nazarene deceive you, plural, and he filled your ears with lies, and closed your hearts, and turned you from the traditions of your fathers. When I, John, heard these things I turned away from the temple to a desert place. And I grieved greatly in my heart, saying, How then was the Saviour appointed, and why was he sent into the world by his father, and who is his father who sent him, and of what sort is that eon to which we shall go? For what did he mean when he said to us, This eon to which you will go is of the type of the imperishable eon, but he did not teach us concerning the latter, of what sort it is. Straightway, while I was contemplating these things, behold, the heavens opened and the whole creation which is below heaven shone, and the world was shaken. I was afraid, and behold I saw in the light a youth who stood by me. While I looked at him, he became like an old man. And he changed his likeness, again, becoming like a servant. There was not a plurality before me, but there was a likeness with multiple forms in the light, and the likenesses appeared through each other and the likeness had three forms. He said to me, John, John, why do you doubt, or why are you afraid? You are not unfamiliar with this image, are you? That is, do not be timid. I am the one who is with you, plural, always. I am the father, I am the mother, I am the son. I am the undefiled and incorruptible one. Now I have come to teach you what is and what was and what will come to pass that you may know the things which are not revealed and those which are revealed, and to teach you concerning the unwavering race of the perfect man. Now, therefore, lift up your face, that you may receive the things that I shall teach you today, and may tell them to your fellow spirits who are from the unwavering race of the perfect man. And I asked to know it, and he said to me, The monad is a monarchy with nothing above it. It is he who exists as God and Father of everything, the invisible one who is above everything who exists as incorruption, which is in the pure light into which no eye can look. He is the invisible spirit, of whom it is not right to think of him as a god, or something similar. For he is more than a god, since there is nothing above him, for no one lords it over him. For he does not exist in something inferior to him, since everything exists in him. For it is he who establishes himself. He is eternal, since he does not need anything. For he is total perfection. He did not lack anything, that he might be completed by it, rather he is always completely perfect in light. He is illimitable, since there is no one prior to him to set limits to him. He is unsearchable, since there exists no one prior to him to examine him. He is immeasurable, since there was no one prior to him to measure him. He is invisible, since no one saw him. He is eternal, since he exists eternally. He is ineffable, since no one was able to comprehend him to speak about him. He is unnameable, since there is no one prior to him to give him a name. He is a measurable light, which is pure, holy, and immaculate. He is ineffable, being perfect in incorruptibility. He is, not in perfection, nor in blessedness, nor in divinity, but he is far superior. He is not corporeal nor is he incorporeal. He is neither large nor is he small. There is no way to say, what is his quantity, or, what is his quality, for no one can know him. He is not someone among, other, beings, rather he is far superior. Not that he is, simply, superior, but his essence does not partake in the eons nor in time. For he who partakes in an eon was prepared beforehand. Time was not apportioned to him, since he does not receive anything from another for it would be received on loan. For he who precedes someone does not lack, that he may receive from him. For rather, it is the latter that looks expectantly at him in his light. For the perfection is majestic. He is pure, a measurable mind. He is an eon giving eon. He is life giving life. He is a blessedness giving blessed one. He is knowledge giving knowledge. He is goodness giving goodness. 
He is mercy and redemption giving mercy. He is grace giving grace, not because he possesses it, but because he gives the immeasurable, incomprehensible light. How am I to speak with you about him? His eon is indestructible, at rest and existing in silence, reposing, and, being prior to everything. For he is the head of all the eons, and it is he who gives them strength in his goodness. For we know not the ineffable things, and we do not understand what is immeasurable, except for him who came forth from him, namely, from, the Father. For it is he who told it to us alone. For it is he who looks at himself in his light which surrounds him, namely the spring of the water of life. And it is he who gives to all the eons and in every way, and, who gazes upon his image which he sees in the spring of the Spirit. It is he who puts his desire in his water light which is in the spring of the pure light water which surrounds him. And his thought performed a deed and she came forth, namely she who had appeared before him in the shine of his light. This is the first power which was before all of them, and, which came forth from his mind, she is the forethought of the all. Her light shines like his light, the perfect power which is the image of the invisible, virginal spirit who is perfect. The first power, the glory of Barbello, the perfect glory in the eons, the glory of the revelation. She glorified the virginal spirit and it was she who praised him, because thanks to him she had come forth. This is the first thought, his image, she became the womb of everything, for it is she who is prior to them all, the mother father, the first man, the holy spirit, the thrice male, the thrice powerful, the thrice named androgynous one, and the eternal eon among the invisible ones, and the first to come forth. Less than she greater than requested from the invisible, virginal spirit, that is Barbello, to give her foreknowledge. And the spirit consented. And when he had consented, the foreknowledge came forth, and it stood by the forethought. It originates from the thought of the invisible, virginal spirit. It glorified him in his perfect power, Barbello, for it was for her sake that it had come into being. And she requested again to grant her indestructibility, and he consented. When he had consented, indestructibility came forth, and it stood by the thought and the foreknowledge. It glorified the invisible one and Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. And Barbello requested to grant her eternal life. And the invisible spirit consented. And when he had consented, eternal life came forth, and they attended and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. And she requested again to grant her truth. And the invisible spirit consented. And when he had consented, truth came forth, and they attended and glorified the invisible, excellent spirit and his Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. This is the pentad of the eons of the Father, which is the first man, the image of the invisible spirit. It is the forethought, which Barbello, and the thought, and the foreknowledge, and the indestructibility, and the eternal life, and the truth. This is the androgynous pentad of the eons, which is the decad of the eons, which is the father. And he looked at Barbello with the pure light which surrounds the invisible spirit, and, with, his spark, and she conceived from him. He begot a spark of light with a light resembling blessedness. But it does not equal his greatness. This was an only begotten child of the mother father which had come forth. It is the only offspring, the only begotten one of the Father, the pure light. And the invisible, virginal spirit rejoiced over the light which came forth, that which was brought forth first by the first power of his forethought, which is Barbello. And he anointed it with his goodness until it became perfect, not lacking in any goodness, because he had anointed it with the goodness of the invisible spirit. And it attended him as he poured upon it. And immediately when it had received from the spirit, it glorified the Holy Spirit and the perfect forethought, for whose sake it had come forth. And it requested to give it a fellow worker, which is the mind, and he consented gladly. And when the invisible spirit had consented, the mind came forth, and it attended Christ, glorifying him and Barbello. And all these came into being in silence. And the mind wanted to perform a deed through the word of the invisible spirit. And his will became a deed and it appeared with the mind and the light glorified it. And the word followed the will. For because of the word, Christ the divine autogenes created everything. 
and the eternal life less than and greater than his will and the mind and the foreknowledge attended and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbello, for whose sake they had come into being. And the Holy Spirit completed the divine autogenes, his son, together with Barbello, that he may attend the mighty and invisible, virginal spirit as the divine autogenes, the Christ whom he had honored with a mighty voice. He came forth through the forethought. And the invisible, virginal spirit placed the divine autogenes of truth over everything. And he subjected to him every authority, and the truth which is in him, that he may know the all which had been called with a name exalted above every name. For that name will be mentioned to those who are worthy of it. For from the light, which is the Christ, and the indestructibility, through the gift of the Spirit the four lights, appeared, from the divine autogenes. He expected that they might attend him. And the three, are, will, thought, and life. And the four powers, are, understanding, grace, perception, and prudence. And grace belongs to the light Eon Armazel, which is the first angel. And there are three other eons with this Eon, grace, truth, and form. And the second light, is, Oriel, who has been placed over the second Eon. And there are three other eons with him, conception, perception, and memory. And the third light is Davithi, who has been placed over the third eon. And there are three other eons with him, understanding, love, and idea. And the fourth eon was placed over the fourth light Alelith. And there are three other eons with him, perfection, peace, and wisdom. These are the four lights which attend the divine autogenes, and these are the twelve eons which attend the Son of the Mighty One the autogenes, the Christ, through the will and the gift of the invisible spirit. And the twelve eons belong to the son of the autogenes. And all things were established by the will of the Holy Spirit through the autogenes. And from the foreknowledge of the perfect mind, through the revelation of the will of the invisible spirit and the will of the autogenes, less than the greater than perfect man, appeared, the first revelation, and the truth. It is he whom the virginal spirit called Pagera Adamas, and he placed him over the first eon with the mighty one, the autogenes, the Christ, by the first light Armazel, and with him are his powers. And the invisible one gave him a spiritual, invincible power. And he spoke and glorified and praised the invisible spirit, saying, It is for thy sake that everything has come into being and everything will return to thee. I shall praise and glorify thee and the autogenes and the eons, the three, the father, the mother, and the son, the perfect power. And he placed his son Seth over the second eon in the presence of the second light Oriel. And in the third eon the seed of Seth was placed over the third light Davithi. And the souls of the saints were placed, there. And in the fourth eon the souls were placed of those who do not know the Pleroma and who did not repent at once, but who persisted for a while and repented afterwards. They are by the fourth light Aleleth. These are creatures which glorify the invisible spirit. And the Sophia of the Epinoia, being an eon, conceived a thought from herself and the conception of the invisible spirit and foreknowledge. She wanted to bring forth a likeness out of herself without the consent of the spirit, he had not approved, and without her consort, and without his consideration. And though the person of her maleness had not approved, and she had not found her agreement, and she had thought without the consent of the spirit and the knowledge of her agreement, yet, she brought forth. And because of the invincible power which is in her, her thought did not remain idle, and something came out of her which was imperfect and different from her appearance, because she had created it without her consort. And it was dissimilar to the likeness of its mother, for it has another form. And when she saw, the consequences of, her desire, it changed into a form of a lion-faced serpent. And its eyes were like lightning fires which flash. She cast it away from her, outside that place, that no one of the immortal ones might see it, for she had created it in ignorance. And she surrounded it with a luminous cloud, and she placed a throne in the middle of the cloud that no one might see it except the Holy Spirit who is called the Mother of the Living. And she called his name Yaltabath. This is the first Archon who took a great power from his mother. And he removed himself from her and moved away from the places in which he was born. He became strong and created for himself other eons with a flame of luminous fire which, still, exists now. And he joined with his arrogance which is in him and begot authorities for himself. 
The name of the first one is Apheth, whom the generations call the Reaper. The second one is Harmas, who is the Eye of Envy. The third one is Kalila Ombri. The fourth one is Yabal. The fifth one is Adonai, who is called Sabaot. The sixth one is Cain, whom the generations of men call the Son. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is Abrisin. The ninth is Yobel. The tenth is Armupiel. The eleventh is Melsir Adonine. The twelfth is Belias. It is he who is over the depth of Hades. And he placed seven kings, each corresponding to the firmaments of heaven, over the seven heavens, and five over the depth of the abyss, that they may reign. And he shared his fire with them, but he did not send forth from the power of the light which he had taken from his mother, for he is ignorant darkness. And when the light had mixed with the darkness, it caused the darkness to shine. And when the darkness had mixed with the light, it darkened the light and it became neither light nor dark, but it became dim. Now the archon who is weak has three names. The first name is Yaltabath, the second is Saklas, and the third is Samael. And he is impious in his arrogance which is in him. For he said, I am God and there is no other God beside me. For he is ignorant of his strength, the place from which he had come. And the archons created seven powers for themselves, and the powers created for themselves six angels for each one until they became 365 angels. And these are the bodies belonging with the names. The first is Atheth. He has a sheep's face. The second is Elohu. He has a donkey face. The third is Astapheos. He has a hyena's face. The fourth is Yao. He has a serpent's face with seven heads. The fifth is Sabaot. He has a dragon's face. The sixth is Adonan. He had a monkey's face. The seventh is Sabid. He has a shining fire face. This is the sevenness of the weak. But Yaltabath had a multitude of faces, more than all of them, so that he could put a face before all of them, according to his desire, when he is in the midst of seraphs. He shared his fire with them, therefore he became lord over them. Because of the power of the glory he possessed of his mother's light, he called himself God. And he did not obey the place from which he came. And he united the seven powers in his thought with the authorities which were with him. And when he spoke it happened. And he named each power beginning with the highest. The first is goodness with the first, authority. Atheth. The second is foreknowledge with the second one, Eloio. And the third is divinity with the third one, Astropheo. The fourth is lordship with the fourth one, Yao. The fifth is kingdom with the fifth one, Sabaot. The sixth is envy with the sixth one, Adonine. The seventh is understanding with the seventh one, Sabatian. And these have a firmament corresponding to each eon heaven. They were given names according to the glory which belongs to heaven for the destruction of the powers. And in the names which were given to them by their originator there was power. But the names which were given them according to the glory which belongs to heaven mean for them destruction and powerlessness. Thus they have two names. And having created, everything, he organized according to the model of the first eons which had come into being so that he might create them like the indestructible ones. Not because he had seen the indestructible ones, but the power in him, which he had taken from his mother, produced in him the likeness of the cosmos. And when he saw the creation which surrounds him, and the multitude of the angels around him which had come forth from him, he said to them, I am a jealous God, and there is no other God beside me. But by announcing this he indicated to the angels who attended him that there exists another God. For if there were no other one, of whom would he be jealous? Then the mother began to move to and fro. She became aware of the deficiency when the brightness of her light diminished. And she became dark because her consort had not agreed with her. And I said, Lord, what does it mean that she moved to and fro? But he smiled and said, Do not think it is, as Moses said, above the waters. No, but when she had seen the wickedness which had happened, and the theft which her son had committed, she repented. And she was overcome by forgetfulness and the darkness of ignorance and she began to be ashamed. And she did not dare to return, but she was moving about. And the moving is the going to and fro. And the arrogant one took a power from his mother. For he was ignorant, thinking that there existed no other except his mother alone. And when he saw the multitude of the angels which he had created, then he exalted himself above them.